Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Canada and the United States just wrapped up the North American Renewable Integration Study, a five-year study that examined future scenarios for the transition to a low-carbon grid. The Canadian Renewable Energy Association co-chaired a Canadian stakeholder committee that coordinated input from industry in Canada. We talked to Phil McKay. Hi, my name is Phil McKay. I'm a Senior Director of Operations at the Canadian Renewable Energy Association. We are talking about the North American Renewable Integration Study, which uh, really was a big study. Actually, it's been uh, touted as the largest geographical study of its kind. And it is looking at the integration of renewable energy, so wind, uh, solar, uh, hydro, um, across the entire continent of North America. The mega study concluded there are multiple pathways to a low carbon future. It was aimed around looking at uh, cost optimization of renewable integration. If you start looking at all of the different uh, dials that you can turn on the continental grid, um, and we're talking all the way from rooftop solar up to mega projects uh, on the wind and solar side. And one of the big things that came out was uh, kind of this massive deployment of wind and solar. We're talking tenfold increases in what we have today uh, in Canada. So how much solar and wind are we talking about? So what we see in the range of scenarios is 78 to 150 gigawatts of wind and 34 to 51 gigawatts of solar. So that's, yeah, at least a tenfold increase on that high end, which is uh, a massive build-out. The study began before Canada and companies began setting goals of net zero emissions. But even in the business-as-usual scenario, Canada gets 90% of its electricity from renewable energy, including hydro, by 2050. So in the study itself, uh, they're looking at uh, 93 to 97% reductions in emissions in Canada, uh, 80% reductions for the continent. But as you mentioned, I mean, we've seen uh, the Canadian government, U.S. government make commitments to even farther to complete net zero. And, and we do see that as possible within these scenarios. To get to net zero, it's going to take numbers like, like we've been talking about today. Uh, big numbers, big build out. And, and that's just uh, part, of, part of the package. Here's the kicker. The study also concluded that electricity prices will go down over time due to the low cost of renewables. That, yeah, that certainly was a big win when we saw, when we saw the, uh, the wind procurements in Alberta and Saskatchewan with uh, really low, low prices um, and uh, has been a real boost. We believe that we're on the right path here and we're, we're doing the right thing but really exciting to have the economics behind us. The study concluded a massive build-out of transmission lines to interconnect the Canadian provinces and the U.S. grids could save billions in the long run and accommodate large amounts of renewable energy. Right, so you see the sun hitting the East Coast and the, uh, the solar panels light up, generation increases. You can ship some of that west a lot faster than the sun moves. And so that transmission can play that role. Natural gas does continue to play a role in all scenarios. But smart grids, energy storage, electric vehicles, and electricity policies are wild cards that could make the scenarios more and not less favorable from a consumer point of view. We've barely scratched the surface of this giant study. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.